haven't had the chance to do any discussion yet on New World, but I've been wanting to for the past couple of days. I had a little bit of an opportunity to explore some more of the PvP. I tried it, of course, during the betas. And for many people who originally like this game or the concept of this game, most of those people who were looking forward to this game were typically PvPers. And New World, of course, did the whole 180 talking about how we were going to be switching up from being a pvp centered game to being more focused on pve and now that the game is released there really isn't a lot in terms of pve and content that there is to do in this game now originally a lot of the content was supposed to revolve around that player versus player interaction. You've probably watched some of your favorite streamers or maybe you've checked out a build video from YouTube and showcasing all these different builds of what you can do in the game. But none of that really matters if nobody flags. And that's one of the biggest problems, depending upon what server you start on, where you could come, you may not come across a lot of players who are looking to, who are looking to PvP because a lot of what you can get from PvP you can get by just not flagging and doing the PvE versions of the PvP quests. And so a lot of the the gear that you would get that is primarily that was originally related to flagging up and fighting other players, you can get by just doing these random PvE quests that have absolutely nothing to do with PvP. Not only that, when you actually look at the map in terms of the different quests that you can do to build up the towns, drawing taxes, um, donating for wars. A lot of that can be done without ever having to step on the battlefield. And so there's literally no incentive for players to flag in New World. Outside of a little bit of extra XP, maybe you're going to get a little bit more weapon skill, but if, just for the purpose of, exam of, of advancement. And especially once you hit 60, there's really no reason to because you're probably going to be doing other things for gear. You're already pretty much at max level. And so even then, unless you're a PvPer, there's really no incentive for you to flag for PvP. Now, of course, if you're a PvPer, PvPers know we're going to be doing PvE to grind so that we can go out there and do 1v1s, dueling, uh, tournaments, uh, battlegrounds, etc. Castle sieges, if there ever, if there ever were. This is basically the version of New World where you're fighting over these different forts, but they're relegated to 50 v 50 and the companies can hold 100 players and you can have a couple of companies. Maybe you have a lot of people who want to join in, but you're typically going to bring your best 50 because it's limited. It's 50 v 50. Now, a game that I came from that I loved in terms of PvP was Lineage 2. Lineage 2 till this day, hands down had the best PvP, PvE experience that I have ever played. And I played a lot of different MMOs and always looking for kind of like that feel that you get of that open world and what which many people thought New World was going to bring. In fact, that was the whole premise of the game is that the whole world, you know, when you're walking around this big expansive map, and you're hunting a boar, you're killing, you know, zombie-like creatures, or you're chopping down wood. At any moment, an enemy could be lurking, looking to take your life. And so it made, and that was their whole point, it made everything feel dangerous. Not just the mobs that you came across, but also other players. Now, since everybody has to flag, it brought in a wave of what we could call care bears, right? These individuals who are like, I'm here to PvE, I want to sit here and I want to kill mobs over and over and over again. In fact, there's really no uh, there's really no diversity in the mobs in this game either. And it's primarily because those mobs were typically just relegated to you farm these mobs, you get the, the mats that you need, you do some simple quests. But the real point was the player versus player interaction from your everyday, the moment you wash up on the beach... The player versus player interaction was supposed to be there. But then everybody was crying during the early betas and the alphas talking about, oh, we're getting killed by higher levels. This is not fun, etc. And as a result of the whining and the crying that went on during the alphas and the betas, now this is what we have. I have a bunch of people who just don't want to flag, especially because there's no 
incentive for them to flag. And I've watched numerous streamers, very popular streamers like Cypher PK or Frangrish or some of the, some of the other streamers who have been playing the game and you see a lot of the same thing. They're all on kind of different servers and people just really don't flag. And so you're walking around from, you know, doing all these different PvE, fighting these same mobs over and over and over again. And at least the mobs have some level of di di difficulty to them, unlike the Elder Scrolls Online, where they're just literally face roll. If they were that way, the game would be completely ruined and there would be absolutely nothing to do. And so a lot of times where you're solo and you're flagged, you might come across multiple people. You might run out here and you'll come across maybe a small group, maybe a two guys who are duoing, maybe three people, you might come across a five-man group, and it's just you. You're the only person. You're flagged up. You're solo, and it makes for a little bit of, of a not-so-fun experience, especially because when you're out there soloing and you're flagged, it's a little bit harder to deal with that many players, which is one of the reasons why you know we're not going to cover any balance issues in this game. And the real the gist of this video is talking primarily about do I think from what I've played so far, do I think New World will last from a PvP or a PvE perspective? And this is what a flagged player looks like. You can see that his name is red. And when he gets near to the town, as you can see, the name turns white. Basically, the flagging system turns off. And so, in my opinion, because New World does neither the PvE well, nor the PvP well, it forces the developers and, of course, the higher-ups to choose which direction they will go. And since they've already stated that, for the most part, that their goal is to go the PvE route, in my opinion, for the long term, New World will die, at least from a pvp perspective what you'll what you will see in this game lag detected which is also not new but i'm in a hotel so the internet here i'm on the wi-fi so it's not that fantastic and uh, so i've had a, even on the shitty internet here it hasn't been too bad now because everybody is forced to flag what you're hearing a lot from the pvp community so far is we need server transfers this server that I'm on has no PvP, or there was PvP, and then the people who were either leading the company, they just dipped, and they went to another server and created characters on that server. And so people are not waiting. Like, we need server transfers because we want a PvP server. Now, in the very beginning, we, you know, the people, uh, the community asked the developers, why don't you just split? Why don't you just have a PvP servers and have some pve servers give us our free-for-all server and let them go and do their pve stuff that they want to do and of course they said that they had no goal in doing that that they wanted to um you know they wanted the communities to be together and the two communities don't coincide very well especially in today's day especially with today's PVEers. the reason being is because if you put anything behind a pvp wall the pveers will always complain that we're missing out on content that we paid for this content and now you're forcing us to pvp and that's kind of the route why these quests that you would typically do when you come to the message boards over here you can basically pick up whatever whichever faction that you basically join you can come over here take some quests but then not all of the quests actually require you to pvp you can do these very simple PvE, PvP quests to get very much the same rewards. And the PvP versions really don't make that big of a difference. As you can see, you come over here. This is basically the PvP quest giver. And as you can see, the rewards here, it's 385 and 475 of the faction token for the PvE versions of these quests. But the PvP versions down here really don't give all that much more to make it worth wild for you to flag especially because if you die while doing these quests which like i said because some people will come around in small groups you might find high levels in your area for whatever reason you might be level 15 16 20 and some random level 40 uh, comes into your area that you have to fight and sometimes it's not very competitive to fight against such individuals because the game is very gear score heavy in terms of even though they have scaling but it's typically scaled based off of do you have the best gear for your particular level if you don't well then the fights become a little bit mismanaged and so there's really no incentive uh, for higher level players not to kill you 
and there's really not a lot of incentive for low level players to go out and fight higher levels and so what you'll see is you'll see it's very rare to see individuals flagged or they're typically running around a group and i'm talking about it from the perspective of a solo player is and this has basically been my experience on this particular server it's not like eso where you've got like this huge mega server etc and you and you port yourself into a pvp area like cyrodiil and you know everybody there is flagged here because it's all open world you run around many of the individuals from your own faction and they're not flagged so you might be getting attacked by members of the opposing faction who are all flagged and then you've got a bunch of your faction not flagged and they basically become useless to you there's no way for them to help you unless they opt to flag and you can only flag as you can see when you're standing in a town you can sit here and it'll say pvp enabled or you can disable pvp if you're just looking to go out there and do some simple farming or do some quests or leveling etc and i think because that is the case and because there's really no end game in terms of pve the PVEers will cry there's nothing for us to do and because of the lack of pvp many of the pvpers are like well i'm not getting into a good company to do the 50 v 50s the pvp in the open world is pretty sparse many individuals will opt to not stick around hoping for something else to go that route and whichever group is more plentiful in terms of financially speaking that's the route that new world will go and so if new world goes the route of pve in terms of pvp this game will die i already see the writing on the wall it's not that the game doesn't have the ability to be amazing in terms of its pvp content that's one of the best things about pvp games is that the content doesn't have to be given to you by the developer see the other route the developers have to sit there and go on the hamster wheel and crank out content every three months because the normies will just they'll beat the dungeons they'll beat the raids and then they'll be like with their pitchforks we want more and then the developers have to go out there and create more pve content um for the to appease the pveers but that's not the case with pvp pvpers can be held at bay as it were and and enjoy the pvp from the different areas because you have all this huge map where you could be fighting individuals in different areas and then you can start adding you know more castle sieges you can add um dungeons where you're fighting over pvp gear etc that maybe spawn certain times during the day or certain times during the week and so that that adds a flavor of content that developers cannot create you cannot create the dynamic pvp content it creates itself and it becomes unpredictable unlike pve content that is super predictable which is why it needs to be churned out every couple of months now people will say well there's you know there's so much to do this there's, there's crafting to do you can go out there and level and you can create all these builds but to to what avail what is the what is the end point of new world it doesn't have one because there's neither pve end game neither is there pvp end game because the whole game was supposed to be designed around pvp and since they basically removed they mean originally they said the spine of the game was pvp and since they literally removed and ripped the spine out of the game the foundation of the game now the game has nothing to stand on it does neither pve well nor the nor does it do pvp well and that's why in my opinion i think new world is going to suffer in the long run and if the developers don't change the route that they go and really start considering adding pvp servers it will go the route of pve and this game in terms of pvp will be dead it'll literally be eso 2.0